So all the stresses that we've been talking about that you see that we address with Le Chatelier's principle can be represented on an, a graph that shows the concentrations of all of our species and how they change over time. Here we've got a reaction with carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen and producing carbon dioxide and heat. And the system starts out at equilibrium and then we're going to start poking it in various ways and see how it reacts. And anytime you see a vertical spike like this, this means human intervention. Chemical systems do not do anything instantly in a jump like this. So this would mean that a person came along and did something to disrupt the system. And what I see with the first one is all of the concentrations, every species, all jump at the same time. One explanation for that would be that we came along and injected all three of these gases into the into the container. We just added more chemical. Another way you could explain this one is that when a concentration goes up, because concentration is N over V, if a concentration increases, either the number of moles went up, which means we added chemical, or maybe the volume got smaller. If this was in a container, we may have just crushed down the container or collapsed it, or if it had a piston top, bring the piston down so that the volume suddenly drops, and that would explain all these volumes jumping simultaneously, sorry, all these concentrations jumping simultaneously. So for stress A, they're, they're asking what could have happened describe what happened at this point in time, I could say either added CO, O2, and carbon dioxide, or reduced volume. Either one of those would explain the three spikes. So they do that to the system, and then you see the system reacts. We, we lose some carbon dioxide or monoxide, and we lose some oxygen, and we produce carbon dioxide, and then the system finds equilibrium again. And then what happens at this step? Carbon dioxide suddenly drops. Well, the other, one, the other two did not change, at least not right away, so this little spike here tells us that some carbon dioxide was removed. This one can't be a volume change because volume changes would affect everything in the container and here only the CO2 is impacted. So we have to assume here that some carbon dioxide was taken out. After we take that out, notice the system tries to replace it. That's Le Chatelier's principle. It uses up carbon monoxide and oxygen and produces more CO2. Eventually it finds equilibrium again and sits there being happy until at C. What happens here? There aren't any spikes which means we didn't add any chemical or take any chemical out and we didn't change the volume either but the equilibrium does something. How do you change this if you're not adding or taking away any chemicals and you didn't change the pressure? Could be this. If we add heat If we add heat to this system, what will the system do? Nothing will happen right off the bat, but as you watch, the system will consume heat, which we won't see here. It will consume carbon dioxide, and yep, that did indeed happen. It will produce oxygen, yeah, the oxygen's coming up here, and it will produce carbon monoxide, which we also see. So it looks like C was added heat, or if you want to say it increased the temperature, or we put the container on a hot plate, or we lit the container on fire. Any of those things would explain what happened at sea. And after a while, the system settles and finds equilibrium again. And then at D, it looks like nothing happens. No change. So... If they're talking about what stress occurred at D, it can't be anything to do with heat. We would have noticed that. It can't be a change in any of the chemical species. Pressure, the system is pressure sensitive because it's three moles here and two moles here, so there can't have been any change to the pressure. I don't see anything that we could have done at point D that would have affected the system, which means I kind of object to them saying there was a stress at D. D, there appears to have been no change, therefore, 
implies no stress.